hold up your badge right, actually. It's, okay. uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's a hammer. Sahana so I wonder if you could tell me uh, uh, who you are and what you uh, do. I'm Sahana Singh, editor of Asian Water Magazine, uh, which is uh, a leading monthly magazine in the Asia, which talks about water and sanitation, uh, wastewater management uh, in, in the Asian region, and most of our readers are in Asia. Um, how long? How long have you been involved? Well, how long have you been doing it for? And have you, um, because I'm interested. It's in been like now about nine years that I've yeah. been working with this uh, magazine, and uh, every year it's getting more and more interesting. So when I started off, um, you know, everybody used to just every, people knew that water is scarce, we're having problems with water, but now over the years now it's uh, you know the, the focus is getting more defined. Now we know that we have problems with water quality, water quantity. Then there is the climate change aspect, then there is the sanitation aspect, you know. A uh, lot of people are just talking about water, but they, the, the real problem is not just water, but what is happening to the used water. So once, whenever we, we use water, we, all, we generate wastewater. So what happens to that? So that is something that's been talked about now in recent years. And then now, an even more exciting aspect that has come out is the reuse of wastewater. How we are going to reuse that uh, water in various, uh, you know, in uh, maybe gardening, in farming, yeah. and even for drinking. So that's what it's becoming uh, interesting, more and more interesting over the years. I've um, I spent a bit of time with um, Zen Rainman Vishwanath from Argium. I don't know if you've ever met, but he's mm -hmm. and his incredible house with his rooftop. He's got this this house where almost everything is rainwater harvested, mm -hmm. <laughs> including drinking water. And I, I think um, I mean, rainwater harvesting, I, I spent some time in India and, and it's it's a huge opportunity there, isn't yeah, it? There is. Uh, see, but the, now the problem is that the rainfall patterns are getting altered. So a lot of rain is coming all together and it's, it's like unevenly distributed uh, in time and in space. So how are you going to manage it? Earlier people would go for big solutions, there would be big dams, you know, to capture the water but now we have realized that you build those big dams and then you know when there's no rainfall those they are empty yeah. you know you have just put so much money into it so now the smaller solutions are coming into play and people are saying you should have small dams check dams and manage water more locally rather than you know having a big central water management system so i mean there's there, there are a whole range of technological solutions yeah. and the only thing which is missing is the will you know the political will um, a lot of time what's happening is that the political leaders are not aware of this range of solutions and uh, they just, you know, the people keep coming and going so there's not one person in charge of the sector for a long period of time. So they're just going for short, uh, short term solutions. They're not looking at the big picture. So I think, yeah, so these, the conferences like this, you know, uh, they, they need to be attended more by the political the political people so that, you know, they, they, they should sit through these sessions and understand what's happening in the water sector. Yeah. I wondered if you, yeah, as a, as a journalist mm -hmm. yourself, uh, I wondered if what your view is on how the press in general mm -hmm. reports on water. Uh, uh, I, remember press... read, I remember reading an article in India, uh, in the Times, I think it was, which, which was really bizarre. It was like, in some parts of the mm -hmm. country, there's a problem with water. Mm -hmm. And it was almost written as if it was... Uh, yeah. There was a bit of denial going on, I couldn't right. help but feel. Um, but. The press, you know, the problem with the press is that they don't, uh, anybody can get into the press. <laughs> uh, I, have a, I have a problem with the, kind, with the credentials they have. Uh, so it's like a lot of people getting into it and, um, and, and they, they really don't go into the depth of issues. A person who's writing about uh, finance today would be writing about health tomorrow, would be writing about something else the day after tomorrow. So this person would not really have a passion for that particular um, thing, issue which he's covering. So for instance, water. You, it takes years and years to understand what the water sector is all about. So if somebody just comes along and writes something about water, he's just going to talk about the sensational aspect. You know, we are running out of water and you know, our water is polluted. You know, do something. And, but he's not going into the solutions. He, he will not be talking about what people need to do. You know, what do we need to do in our day-to-day -day life? Uh, so these are the problems for the journalists. You know, they... they they just, uh, they look at uh, the superficial uh, aspects of the uh, problems. So this is my, um, I'm, I'm not saying all well, journalists no, Yeah, well, it, you know, as a very specialised trade publication in the sense of sector-specific publication, I think, you know, you have a, 
a certain role to play. I presume that you know more generic publications will actually will do on certain occasions feature things that you're saying, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, them, themselves because you're you've got the cer- a certain. Yeah, I, I think it's important. Expertise. You know what? I feel that journalists should stick to one covering one particular field and keep doing it over the years. That's the only way they're going to get uh, get some degree of knowledge in that subject, and their covering is going to get better. Otherwise, it's going to be very superficial and people are not going to react to the issues as they should. Yeah. I wonder how online online media is changing your work now in Asia. Uh, online media, I think, is now we are getting access to more information, which is both good and bad. Because yeah, you're a print magazine. It's on ours it. is a print it's magazine, but yes, we, we have a website and we are soon going to put all our articles there and all the archives there. So I think that's going to make it very accessible to people. Um, yeah, so online online is the way to go now. I think uh, and what you're doing is great work. Uh, so what I hope now is that you know there'll be people will talk about the real issues instead of just you know. So for example, you know there's a problem with water management, but people keep talking about water scarcity. It's actually a problem of management. So if you with whatever water you have, if you manage it well, it's enough for everybody. So these are the things which need to be talked about. And in India, for instance. There is a myth, you know, people think that it's not possible to get 24 by 7 water and they think that if you have 24 by 7 water, it will lead to more wastage of water. What they don't understand is that if they, if they have 24 by 7 water, people will, uh, will not store water and, you know, thinking that uh, there's going to be a shortage later on, people will not, will not store water and then throw it away when the fresh water comes in. You know, that's what yeah. happens in India. Yeah. What people do is that since the water comes just for a few hours in the day, they fill up all their buckets at that time and they keep it. And then when the water again comes uh, uh, for two hours, uh, some other time, they throw away all the old water and fill up the new water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, a lot of people, even the engineers believe that. And how common is that? I mean, that's all over India. Yeah. So that's called the intermittent water supply. So what we need to do in the cities is to go for 24 by 7 water supply. But we must have uh, the right pricing of water. Water should be so priced that, you know, uh, some amount of water is subsidized, you know, uh, the basic needs. But beyond that, if you use water, the, you know, the pricing should go this high. It should go very high, you know. So what, what they're doing now is, uh, they're saying that we are doing this for the poor. We want the poor not to uh, suffer for, because of paying for water. So they're making it almost free. So in Asian countries, you hardly, they hardly charge for water. It's almost free. In the Middle East is almost free. So it's only in Europe, you know, when, when people are actually paying, uh, paying for water. And even here, they're not actually paying the full cost of... Because I was talking to somebody here the other day about actually, yeah, that, that water is something that should be charged for in, in many places, but then you have specific programs to make sure that the poor also have yes, access to water. it's perfectly so possible, you, yeah. you structure it like that. Exactly. You can structure the tariffs in such a way that, that the poor are taken care of, that their basic needs are taken care of. And then beyond a certain level of water consumption, you should be taxed very high. That because otherwise, to... there isn't enough money going into the infrastructure exactly. to actually make it reliable right. and effective. And... Right. So you need, we know, you need to invest in the, in the water system because we, you, you know the maximum money which goes into a water system is all underground. All the underground pipes which go and supply water. And then the sewers which take the water for the, to the wastewater treatment plants. So that takes up all the money and that needs maintenance. You can't just set it up and then leave it. Every year, every throughout the year you need to maintain it and it costs money. Yeah. So what happens is if you don't price the water correctly, people will use enormous amounts of water. Uh, and not just so, you know, even the, the, the rich are also using water very freely because they're paying the same as the, as the poor. And, and, and then, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a paradox that this water is, prices are kept low to help the poor. But what happens is that the poor, uh, who, who live beyond the reach of this, uh, you know, the piped water system, they actually pay per bucket. They buy buckets of water or they, buy, they have to buy water and they pay 20 times more than what they should be paying. Yeah. So this whole exercise is quite fruitless, you know, the, the, the process of keeping tariffs low. It's not having the impact that it should. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah sorry, one more issue yeah, I want yeah, to yeah. highlight is the leakage from pipes. This is something that is happening all over Asia. Uh, about 40 to 50 percent of water is being lost from the pipelines. And again, this is because uh, people are not paying enough for water, so there's not enough investment going back into water. So the pipelines are not being maintained. So one small leak becomes a big leak and it goes on forever. 
So, uh, so then you know half the water that is being pumped into the water for supply is lost. So that's what is happening. Yeah. So you're saying that the the key here is to get more money into the right hands to get into the right infrastructure. The key is to price water correctly. Yeah. Uh, and to give high prior priority to water, to understand the value of water. So, you know, you should know the value of water. You should not just talk about, you know, water is free, water comes from heaven, water is, uh, uh, it is so essential for life that it should be free. No longer, because it costs money to treat it, uh, to pipe it. So we, we have an, an obligation to pay for the water. So, uh, just last question. I mean, your, your job must be, I mean, you're based in Singapore, based yes, in Singapore. but you must get to see a lot stuff do you get to, do you get to see a lot of you know a lot of the reality of what's happening yeah. out there yes uh, yeah I mean it's it's quite sad you know sometimes when I see uh, when I when I go, when I see people in villages uh, who don't have water and uh, they have to they have to they have to walk for miles and miles to get water and uh, children cannot go to school because of this and then this problem of toilets not having uh, toilets in the house and people going to the fields and then uh, when I come to conferences like this, but I'm not talking about this particular conference, but you know there are lots of conferences yeah. all over the world. A lot of people just come, talk, uh, enjoy themselves and go back and then one wonders what happened. Did, did it lead to somebody getting uh, water? Yeah. So uh, these, these are the things I reflect about. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's great talking to you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for allowing me to